It may look beautiful and warm out here, but there's actually still frost on the grass. So I'm probably not gonna be here for long, but I just wanted to see a little bit of the morning sun. Okay, we are now in the garage and there's Johnny Pops. Oh, that's a tense face. What are you doing? What's that for? I was um, putting two of these together. This, oh my God, look at Myrtle. There is your diesel pump, which... Um, Myrtle's been ripped apart. Okay, so talk us through what's going on. Diesel heater. We got diesel heater in Myrtle. Oh my goodness, this has been drama. This seat had to come out. I had to unbolt that. I'll have everybody know. <laughs> it was really hard work. We got the seat out. He's had to um, he's had to take the lid off the diesel tank, which is under that seat. Who knew? And he's drilled a hole into that and he's run a pipe from there through the bulkhead. Through the bulkhead? Yeah. Yeah, through the bulkhead. Um, let me just... <laughs> um, underneath the bulkhead. Look at yeah, this. So Look at this stuff everywhere. Um, and then in here... The pipe comes up there somewhere and comes into here. Uh, so then this is the diesel heater. This is the heating pipe, which comes around this corner and then comes out of this thing. And then this is the like sucky any bit. Is that his technical name? That's the sucky any bit. Sucky yeah. any bit. So this yeah. sucks in fresh air and then it magically converts it into- the air from the- um... It recirculates the air. From the ubi doofa? From the ubi <laughs> He does know what he's talking about, really honest. No, Sucks in the cold air there and then it spits out the hot air there, basically. Uh, so what else is going on? I've taken down a headlining or one of them, which is like a mess everywhere. Um, in, under this cupboard is going to be where all the electrics and batteries and everything go. Uh, this cupboard here, which I can't really get to right now to show you, but that's our new fridge in there. Let me just come around here and show you from the outside. Oh, yes. We had little fluffy visitors. They are no longer, I'm afraid. Sorry, little mices. It was that or lock sassy in here overnight. So I figured the trap would be kinder, believe it or not. So yeah, lots of work going on in here, but can you even see through the windscreen? I think it's time we introduce you to the newest member of the Hedgecombers clan. Okay, let's squeeze past Myrtle. Let's squeeze past the tractor. And there, my friends, <laughs> is our new toy. This is Noodle. Oh my God, look how big that van is. I'm so excited. Noodle is a Volkswagen LT35. It's a medium wheelbase, so it's not hugely long. And actually it's not that scary to drive. I've had a little play. Uh, but the most exciting thing for Johnny and I is, if I oik up here, most exciting thing about our new house is look not only can we stand up but there's like tons of room johnny's 510 i'm 56 so even johnny he's probably once it's like lined insulated and got a ceiling in it he's probably gonna like touch the top but he will be able to stand up we're very very excited so do we have a plan for this van well Good question. None of our plans are set in stone at this point in time, but what we're planning is to spend the next one to two years doing this beauty up into our dream camper. Let's give you another little action shot here. And then we figure we may as well take to the road. So we're gonna try the whole hashtag van life thing. Have we put a huge amount of thought into this? No, not really, if I'm honest. Um, but my job means that we can earn money from the road. And I, I, I don't, what else is there? Quite frankly, life is short, we're getting older. And uh, I think we need to go and explore this big old world that we live in. So yeah, this hopefully will be our new house on wheels. And the really nice thing about having such a big van is wherever you look, there's like masses of storage, which obviously in our T4s, there isn't. They're really, really compact. And don't get me wrong, we love the T4s. As you know, we're big fans. But if we're actually going to live on the road, I want to be able to stand up. I want a toilet. And honestly, I want an oven. Is that too much for a girl to ask? <laughs> 
So what are we doing with that beautiful van out there? Dunno, we have got space in the shed to store her long-term, but honestly, I kind of think that'd be a waste. She needs to kind of get adventures. So I'm possibly going to sell her. Don't tell her, uh, possibly, dunno. But I've got one to two years to kind of think about it and work out the game plan, um, but yeah. Okay, now obviously me being me, I've already sketched out the interior because that's the bit I'm most excited about. He's most excited about rust and engines and boring things like that, which is kind of handy because I have no interest in that stuff at all. But let me show you what we've got planned for the inside. Okay, let me precariously balance you on this log pile. Uh, this is the front of the van, this is the back of the van, this is the sliding door. So as you walk in, this is going to be a narrow kitchen units along this side. We're going to keep the bulkhead open so we can escape if we need to, uh, but obviously we want to maximise storage. So this will be normal kitchen counter height, then slightly deeper cupboards here, and in here we're going to have a fridge, an oven, very exciting. Um, a hob will probably go here and a sink, so it's quite a lot to fit in here. Oh, and a compost toilet. Yes, quite a lot to fit there. Uh, then we're having the U-shaped bed, which will fold obviously down into a massive double, possibly king size. Uh, and also these are wide enough that we can just nap if we need a little afternoon nap, uh, or if we can just sleep on them as singles if we can't be bothered to make up the whole bed if we've had a long day or whatever. And then this little bit here, this is gonna be the office slash my breakfast area. So I'm an early bird and Johnny is definitely not. So in the morning, I'll be able to get out of bed. I'll draw a curtain along here so he's nice and cocooned in there in a nice dark bedroom. But then I can come in here, I can open all the curtains, get the daylight, make the coffee, sit there and not feel like I have to stay in a dark van waiting for him to wake up. So, you know, you really have to plan the interior of your van around you and about around your family and what your family needs. And you need to take these things into consideration because otherwise you're going to get some very upset people along the way. Uh, also, this is obviously being the office. This is also where I can sit and edit of an evening or sit and do work for a client or whatever. And that's the reason I'm going for the oven as well. If it was just us just traveling and we didn't have to earn an income, then honestly, I probably wouldn't have an oven because of the amount of room it takes up. But because we do still need to earn an income from the road and my business can travel pretty well. And I write recipes for a living, if you don't know, but if a client gives me a brief and they want me to bake a cake or a quiche or something, obviously I need access to an oven. So it makes sense that if we're gonna be looking to do this long-term that we can actually run my business from it. So an oven, it is. What are you doing next, Johnny? Um, I'm connecting up the diesel heater to the control unit and then I'm going to run some power around hopefully and wow. are we going to test it see if we can get it working I've oh already gosh. sucked some diesel through Ooh. I didn't get it into my mouth which was oh, good, good. Well done. I had the uh <laughs> I could see I could see it coming through the pipe. So oh, it's a clear that pipe. That's handy. Oh, that would have been gross. Yeah, I was expecting it. <laughs> Can you shout when you're going to um, switch it on? Yeah. All righty. And here's another pretty exciting purchase. So this is my new roof rack for Myrtle that I'm going to uh, put the solar panels onto. And it is beautiful. I'm so excited. Roof racks are really damn ugly. Uh, we found this one second hand and it was a steel and it's really lovely. It does have some little bubbles of rust in there. So what Johnny's going to do is, I think we're going to take this wood off and then Johnny's going to get me to grind all the paint off, take it right down to metal so he can see what state it's in. And then if he needs to like apparently cut out like a strip of the pipe, then he's going to be able to weld in. Yeah. Weld in a new bit. It's all very clever stuff. It's beautiful, it's so retro. It was made for a T4, so we know that it fits. And it was um, handmade by the guy that owned the T4. So it's a bit bespoke. And Johnny loves it so, so much that he's bought a pipe bender, mm -hmm. a pipe bender, and he's gonna copy the design and he's gonna make one for his van too. It's gorgeous. Have you got time now to show me how to take yeah, paint off? Yeah, we need to get these off first, so um, okay. I'll get started on that. All right.
I just thought I was recording people and I wasn't, it seems. Uh, so we've had a little go over here and this bit is properly pitted with rust. So this whole section is gonna get cut out and replaced, but we don't have the replacement pipe to do that with today. So Johnny's now saying, that even now I'm all safety kitted up and everything, that he thinks it's probably better that we don't do this today because we're just going to leave it unprotected and then the whole thing is going to rust even more. So perhaps I need to take off these silly goggles and <laughs> wait until we've got the pipe and can do the job from start to finish. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm at kettle on then? Yeah. Coffee cat. Okay, because that little plan didn't go to plan. Then uh, I think I'm going to take a pallet apart. This is not a fun job but I am the one that's gonna be responsible for breaking all the pallets in this new build, of which we are gonna use lots. So I'm two and a half pallets down. Um, the half a pallet was, uh, is it still here? I think that was the half pallet that I tried to break up. Those blue ones are evil. Uh, I gave up, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so I'm going to go and find a nice easy one and I'll put you guys on time lapse again and you can see how quick it is because it'll take me like 35 seconds on time lapse. I use a reciprocating saw to cut through the nails and I use a hammer and um, that, uh, mm, the things that robbers use, I can't think what they're called. So I use a reciprocating saw, a hammer and that claw thing. Oh, crowbar. Crowbar! <laughs> That's the word, crowbar! So we've got all these lumps of, I don't know, chipboard or whatever it is. So there's two, four, six, eight, nine of them. So that's all firewood. They're pretty heavy, actually. Um, there's nothing else we can do with them, so, but they burn quite well. So that's cool. And then we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 little planks of wood. They're scabby and tatty and they've got nails in and they've got splinters in and stuff. So the next bit is we need to get all these nails that I've cut off out. And that's actually quite a fun job. I quite like doing that. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of them to get out. Um, also this time, we're gonna hopefully borrow um, a planer, I think it is, a, a machine that will take off a certain um, slice of this side and this side. I'm very not very technical, as you can tell. I'm very tired too. Um, we're going to borrow a planer that will make these sides smooth. So our current vans and also our kitchen is also built of pallets and we haven't done that for those. So the, the wood and those is very rough. But we're thinking for this one, it will thin this down so it will lighten it up so it won't weigh quite as much. Which on one plank is nothing weight wise, is it? But when you've got like maybe 50 of these or 100 of these, I don't know how many we'll need in a van. But then you're looking at quite a lot of weight. Right, so now let's get these nails out. All right, this is my very cool uh, denailing station. I use the back of the tractor trailer. These are my nasty nails. And then in here I have my hammer. I have a box underneath to catch any stray bits of metal because obviously we don't want like broken nails on this floor. We don't want punctures in vans and vans and tractors and things. Uh, I also have a little toolkit here. This is my bashing toolkit. So there's this monster great big nail with a really flat end. That's what I use to bash them through when they're when they're like little bits of metal just kind of stuck in. I bash them from the other side. Sometimes I have to yank them with a pair of pliers. These are all the ones I've already taken out from all the pallets I've already dismantled. So I'm feeling a bit of a ninja when it comes to this. But before we can do that, Johnny has some news. What's on, Johnny? Uh, diesel heat is about to go. Is it? Well, hopefully. <laughs> if it Fingers works, crossed. Chinese thing and all that. Oh, um, it will be fine. Johnny's put one of these in his van already, oh. um, which is cool. His is a petrol, so he's had to put a separate little bottle in that holds diesel. Obviously, mine can just tap into the tank. 
easy peasy. Uh, I don't know what he's doing over there. Let's skip around here. Well, I don't know how to work this thing. What next? Well, we need to wait. For what? For the uh, fuel pump to kick in. I'm getting arm ache. <laughs> this is going to get mounted here, so it looks nice. I don't know what all these numbers are. I haven't got a posh. Are they in Chinese, like the numbers? No. <laughs> I can speak Chinese. Did you know this? No. Ni hao. It's actually the only Chinese I know. <laughs> it looks like a submarine or a bomb or something. What's the 0 0.04? I have no idea. Oh, do we have a book? Yeah. It's in Chinglish. Chinglish. There you go. I'm not sure we're allowed to say Chinglish. All right. Chinese English. English. Oh my God. That is the fuel pump. Ticking away. It sounds like a bomb's about to go off, babe. Right, it's got diesel to there. You can so, see it? Yeah. Let me get the camera under there. Here we go, I can see little bits coming through. Yeah, see? Oh, where's your finger? Ah! <laughs> That's little bits pushing through. It's going to take a while. But, What's that um, clicking what it's, then? What it's the doing now, yeah, the pump is clicking. That's a, it's the diaphragm. You see, it's just pushing the bits of diesel through, and there's lots of air in there at the moment. But um, I have no idea if you can guide see that, people. I can't, but. So is it just going to come on on its own, or do we have to? Yeah, do... it'll just keep pumping until all the um, all the air locks out. Okay, and then it'll get hot. But it does seem to be um, dragging the diesel out of your tank, so it would appear to be okay so far. Okay, can I bash some nails? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. need to interrupt this little time lapse because we've got heat still warming up but it's uh... wow there's so much air coming through it's like a gust yeah. that is awesome johnny it works now all i need is for curfew to be lifted so that i can actually go camping right back to the nails So there we are all done and that's my two and a half or is that three and a half pallets worth of wood now no that must be two and a half that's not three surely i don't know however many i've done so far that's all the wood all taken apart and denailed next to a bucket of chicken poo of course because look who's in here hi girls these are my poor indoor free range hens because of avian flu they're stuck in here but as you can see it's not a tiny space Look how much they love crapping on those chairs. Oh my goodness. That black bucket was the other way up and I had it as a nesting box for them. But the, one of the girls kept getting in there and eating all the eggs. So I turned it upside down. They now lay in that hay and they don't eat them. What's all that about? I don't know. But anyway, there they are. All very happy and healthy. They've all had a molt this winter, which was early because we moved them indoors. So they had less daylight than they normally would. Um, but they're all back to laying fully now, so we're getting way too many eggs again. But yeah, they don't look too upset, do they? Sweet little girls, aren't you? So I'm not going to take you in there because I have to change my shoes. Down there we've got a pair of brand new um, garden shoes, so whoever goes in the run has to put those shoes on by law so that I'm not traipsing any wild bird poo in there that might be contaminated with avian flu. So these girls are perfectly safe and protected from it. Right, lovelies, I'm going to sign off from today's video here. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out today. Um, and surprising that there was no food. Sorry about that. Hope I haven't left you hungry. <laughs> if you're interested to 
see how our new build comes on over the next months, possibly years, then please do subscribe to the channel. And if you ding that bell, you'll get notified each time we upload our latest video. So I guess from me and a little sassy cat, <laughs> we're going to say ta-ta for now. As always, please stay safe, keep smiling, and we'll catch up with you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.